All right, here we go, scholars, with section 5-1, the beginning of chapter 5. I hope you'll read page 263 in your book, because it's really well written. It does a good job of summarizing what we've learned, explaining what we're about to start to study, and foreshadowing the connection that the founders of calculus found between the two. So here we go. The first half of calculus was all focused on the tangent to a function. Could you find the slope of a function at one single point? So we found out that we could. We learned to call that function the derivative. And that word derivative to differentiate gives us a name that we sometimes use for that first semester of calculus. We call it differential calculus. Calculus with a focus on finding and using derivatives. So just a reminder that one of the most important things that we learned besides how to take a derivative and use derivatives, was that we could approximate the derivative the same way we could approximate slope. And that's to find the slope of a secant line, change in y over change in x, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So that was first semester. Second semester. The second semester, which starts now, is all about finding the area under a curve. Uh, it turns out that a notation that we use for finding area under the curve is called the integral, which we'll start to learn about in this chapter. So we sometimes refer to this second semester, the second half of first year calculus, as integral calculus. And here in chapter 5, we're going to find out that big connection, the big idea that Newton and Leibniz found out that actually connects derivatives to integrals. So they were working on two separate problems. They cared about the slope of a function, they cared about area under a curve, and the more they investigated, the more calculus they discovered, they came to understand that the two problems are very closely related. That's going to be a big focus for us this chapter. So just the a parallel we can draw to first semester. First semester was all about finding slope, and we can approximate slope when the exact slope couldn't be found. We have a similar situation here. We're gonna learn how to find the area under a curve. We're gonna learn how to find it exactly whenever it's possible to. But our focus in this section is how can we approximate the area under a curve if we don't have an exact formula that we can use. So we're gonna find in this section that we're gonna break up the area into rectangles or trapezoids and use those areas to approximate area under a curve. We'll see why in a second. So to understand why the founders of calculus cared so much about finding area under a curve, go back to this problem that you've solved for a long time. You have a train going 75 miles an hour, and between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., how far does the train get? Well, we pull out this formula that we've used forever, which is rate times time equals distance. And you can say the 75 miles an hour times the two hours of time that it's been traveling gives us 150 miles traveled. And the units work out, there's no problem. Great problem. Keep using it, teach it to your little brothers and sisters. But seriously, how many cars, planes, people, particles, rocket ships move at a constant velocity? So this was the problem. If we wanna find distance traveled, we have this formula that works very easily as long as the, dis the, the velocity is constant. But check out this picture down here in the bottom right corner. What about when my velocity isn't constant? And so the founders of calculus surmised that and then came to understand that they were correct. That here, this is the, in the picture on the left, the area under the function 75, the velocity, between seven and nine, if you found the area of that shaded blue region, that gives 150 miles. Well, what if my velocity wasn't constant? Is the area under the velocity curve still equal to distance traveled? It turns out it is. This is huge. This is gonna be tested on every AP test that I, it's on every AP test I've ever seen. The area under the velocity curve, as long as velocity is positive, gives distance traveled. Big deal, you have to know this one. 